What's going on everybody? I want to formally introduce you to my newest hobby, Poison Dark Frogs. I got Poison Dark Frogs last weekend and I've been doing my research for about two months now and I actually learned about Poison Dark Frogs on Solid Gold's channel. It's a uh, goldfish channel. And she keeps all kinds of other pets like rabbits and she's got cats just like me. Uh, poison dart frogs, axolotls, and of course goldfish. And now she even has uh, a couple ponds and I think a couple turtles too. So this is their temporary home. It's their quarantine tank. Basically all it is is unbleached paper towels on the bottom, magnolia leaves, and a few plants in there with a cork bark, which is, uh, I'm not exactly sure if this is what they make like uh, fishing corks out of, but it's a really light bark. So let's take a closer look at these frogs and see it up close. So you can see one of the frogs on that plant there. And I don't know what he's really doing because they don't typically, well I guess they do, but he's supposed to stay on the leaves. He's not supposed to go roaming around. And on the bottom there you can see like that little bug running around. That's a fruit fly and that's mainly what they eat. Maybe that's what he's going after is all the fruit flies that may be up in that plant there. Uh, I can't necessarily find the other one. I've got two of them in here. Oh, here he is right here. So here is the other guy. You can see his fat belly because he just ate. And he's kind of moving around. But they're roughly two months old. And they become adults or sexual whenever they're about 10 to 12 months. The name for these are Dendrobates tinctorius. And their common name is Azurius. Let's see him. He's running around or hopping around. You keep leaves on the bottom of the floor. You're trying to mimic, uh, mimic the like a uh, jungle or a forest. You know, try their mimic mimic their natural habitat. I'm really having a hard time saying the word mimic. <laughs> but uh, one thing that really drew me to this brand new hobby is. You could have a lot of cool plants and they'll really thrive in a vivarium. You know, if some people can't grow plants, say like in their house or outside, you'll probably do really, really, really good uh, having the plants in a vivarium. So some of the plants that I've got here, this is a bromeliad. I've also got, there's a Bromeliad right there. There's a better picture. It's a smaller bromeliad. Uh, they've got different varieties and uh, crossbreeds and whatever you want to call them, but I've just got two right now. I just want to see how, how easy they will be to grow. There's the cork bark, and I've got moss all along there because I want to try to grow moss too. Here's your typical golden pothos. And a lot of people ask if these frogs are poisonous and the answer is kind of it's yes and no so in the wild the way they are poisonous is their food they eat poisonous stuff like a uh, you know plants or tree parts or just whatever you know and then the frog then in turn eats the insects and they become poisonous and some of them are so deadly if you pick them up you could potentially get really really sick or even die but these guys they're captive bred and most of them in the poison dart frog hobby they are captive bred so these parents grandparents and grandparents and grandparents have never known what the wild is and they do not have the 
poison, you know, food source that is out in the wild. This tank is a 20 gallon long, just a normal Aquion aquarium that I got on the dollar a gallon Petco sale. And one cool fact about these is, you know, you can keep a little water dish. They don't drink water. But if they are dehydrated or I guess thirsty, I don't know. They uh, they put their butt in the water and they absorb it through their butt and also their skin. They like temperature between like lower 70s to right about 80 degrees. Anything above that can harm them and eventually kill them. So my 77-ish degrees right now is perfectly fine. But I've got this lid open, so I need to go ahead and shut this. And I'm actually using a National Geographic LED that I had on one of my tanks. I don't. I think it was one of my freshwater tanks. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty cool hobby. They're really easy to care for. All you really need to do is get a fruit fly culture and it looks kind of gross but it's really not that bad so you got the fruit flies in here that are moving and the little things that look like rice are actually the larva so every two weeks you know the fruit flies will breed and then you'll have some uh, uh what are they called little squirmy thingies at the bottom like a uh, termite thing I don't know what they're called anyways they'll come up to the top here and in about two weeks they'll hatch and then you'll have more fruit flies this one culture is really only good for roughly one month because it'll start to attract mites and then you have to freeze them and then discard them so right now I've got these three old cultures and I've started two new cultures for two weeks from now. And then these will be discarded because they'll be a month old. And in these containers, there is springtails and isopods. And this is going to be for my next tank that I'm going to build for these guys. Uh, so they can get out of their QT tank once it's time for them. These tanks here, there's actually two. They are 18 by 18 on the bottom and then 24 inches high. And I've traded for these. I traded a uh, 8 SPS and a Scully for both of these and these are used. So normal price is about 130 bucks and that's on the cheaper side. So these are gonna be two future tanks that I'll be setting up for some more frogs in the future. I also picked up a tadpole. You can see him right there. Come on, squirm, little buddy. There he goes. It's a uh, dart frog tadpole. And he'll grow up and push out two back legs and two front legs and then eventually lose his tail in roughly two months. And this water is from the tannins from a almond... Uh, Indian almond leaf what you do is you boil some RLDI water put some Indian almond leaves in there and the water will leak the leaves will leach all their tannins into that water and it produces a antibacterial slash uh, antifungal uh, properties so that way the dark frog doesn't die from some kind of disease they're real easy to take care of you just basically change their water out once a week and then feed them a couple pellets twice a week and that's it until they go through metamorphosis and grow their legs and lose their tail then you move them into a vivarium like you just saw for some of the plants that I bought I started up a small 10 gallon tank to act as you know I guess you could say a frag tank for plants 
I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 11 or 12 plants in here. And they're all, well, I guess not specifically for dart frogs, but they will work in a very humid and wet uh, vivarium environment. And a lot of these are really cool plants that once they get bigger, they'll produce uh, fruits. You know, not typical fruits, but like uh, one is a lipstick plant. It'll produce like a little red-ish little flower fruit thingy. Um, some other plants I have are, uh, what is another one here? I know one is uh, some fern, a uh, Boston fern, I believe. Another one is baby tears. And most of the other ones, I don't necessarily know the name of them. Three of them here, I actually got just from Home Depot. And I read up on them before I got them. And they will do great in a vivarium environment. So, I already need a bigger tank for these plants. Because they're tiny right now. Like the pots are maybe two inches by two inches each. And they already need more room. So, I, I'll probably set up a 40-gallon breeder and let these tanks or let these plants grow out like they should because it's already crowded on the bottom there i added some sphagnum moss just so whenever i miss these plants the sphagnum moss will retain the moisture and i want you to check out this uh, vivarium lighting that i have it's specifically for plants and it's by a company called Josh's Frogs so I know it's kind of hard to see these but they're I want to say there was like 50 or 60 individual LEDs in each one of these bulbs here it's just your normal screw-in bulb but it's really cool the way they look and they're super bright like on this tank that's all you need and they're only 13 watts each but they'll grow the plants incredibly fast and here you can actually see what the LEDs look like and I paid $37 for each bulb and the hood costs I think 39 bucks specifically for a vivarium to fit the 18 by 18 inch top well that does it for now I hope you guys are interested in poison dart frogs let me know if you actually have some or know anybody that has some or just have any kind of reptiles or other amphibians. Uh, don't forget to comment and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.